Hi, and welcome to another free lesson for improving your small business credit. My name is Joy Greenwood, and I'm one of the owners at Starpoint Credit Solutions. Our Business Credit Basics series provides free information to small business owners who may be struggling to achieve corporate credit. In today's lesson, we're going to provide you with 25 reasons your vendors may not be getting added to your DNB report. Business owners often submit trade references to be included in their business credit file. Doing so provides outside validation for your business by proving you are an active and functioning business with a variety of vendors and suppliers and that you have been provided multiple types of credit, such as net term credit or revolving credit. Adding vendors to your file also helps provide a history of positive payment habits, which will boost scores and ratings, build credit worthiness, and show your company's capability to sustain a higher credit base. There are two ways for payment history to show up in your DNB report, through auto-reporting vendors and manually uploaded vendors. Auto-reporting vendors report every transaction on all of their business customers through a computerized link to DNB system. There's no human interaction where someone can say, well, George normally pays on time, but this time he was five days late. Instead, everything flows in automatically and gets added to your file with the click of a button. Manually uploaded vendors are different. They have to be manually submitted through a credit builder service where an agent sorts and verifies the eligibility of each trade reference. Uh, then they're placed into a calling queue and assigned a specific agent to personally contact the vendor. The agent will then call and ask your vendor seven simple questions, answers to which should be readily available. If everything works as planned, your payment history will get added to your file. But business owners often go through this whole process of gathering together all their vendors' data, purchasing a credit builder service, submitting what vendors they can, but find some of them cannot be submitted, and then watch as they sit in verification for days or weeks at a time, only to find out later they are not accepted or they get added but no payment is being included in the file. This can be especially frustrating when you've spent money on a credit builder that is supposed to help you add your vendors. Unfortunately, one never knows when purchasing the service or uploading the vendors whether they'll get accepted or not. Many business owners will then call DNB, oftentimes in frustration, hoping to find out why their vendor was declined looking for some kind of insider explanation, only to become more frustrated when the DNB representatives will only provide five possible reasons. The vendor is not a US-based company. The vendor does not have a full DNB file of their own. The vendor is a bank, credit card, utility, or financial institution. That the vendor already auto reports into DNB's automated system or that DNB has failed in six attempts to reach the vendor to gather or confirm credit history. And to most people, none of their explanations make any sense at all. In reality, there are actually more than 40 reasons why a trade reference can be declined or blocked from reporting into your file. In addition to the ones that DNB has already provided, there are several reasons that might be considered a no-brainer for most people, but DNB does not permit their agents to reveal these reasons because it can inflame a situation or cause more harm than good. Many reasons could reveal DNB's proprietary information, so they aren't going to release those reasons, and neither are we but we will give you 20 of the more obvious reasons that could help you and better understand without revealing any of DNB's trade secrets. As I explained earlier, when contacted by a DNB agent to provide a trade reference, the vendor is required to answer seven questions. 
and they have to answer all seven questions in order for your payment history to be accepted. Those questions are how long you've been doing business with them, their line of business, and what specific type of service they provide to you, your highest invoice amount in the last 12 months, the most recent invoice date, what terms they allow you, such as net 30, 10 net 30, or do you always pay COD? Um, how do you pay? Do you pay promptly, slow, prepaid, or on discount? And DMB will also gather the name and title of the person who's reporting to verify that they're actually eligible to report. Even after the vendor has reported, there are times when the information cannot be added to the credit file, such as if the vendor reports payment is either prepaid or COD. DMB will accept the vendor, but they'll put it in as a zero dollar amount because there's no proof that you were ever actually trusted with anything higher than zero dollars. The information will also be excluded if the service they provided is one that would other, otherwise be excluded, such as a utility or landlord. If the vendor reveals the purchase was personal in nature rather than business related, DMB disregards that vendor completely. If the vendor states the purchase was related to a different business name and not the business DMB is calling about. In that case, not only is the information excluded, but it could throw up red flags about your business. DMB will also exclude the information if the vendor tells the DMB that the bill was not paid yet. Typically, DMB requires an invoice to be 45 days old before they'll accept it. If the bill hasn't been paid by then, it's going to be considered a slow pay unless you have terms that are higher than a 30-day net. But let's start with the first five vendor decline reasons that we already know about. The vendor is not a US-based business, and that's because DMB can only truly trust information they can readily gather and confirm. If the vendor does not have a full DMB file of their own, because the vendor has to be considered fully validated for at least a year before being eligible to report. If the vendor is a bank, credit card, utility, or financial institution. Most of the transactions that can be reported by these types of vendors already are, or else they're ineligible to report. If the vendor already auto-reports into DNB's automated system, this information will flow onto your report automatically, so they don't want you to waste one of those very valuable and expensive slots on something that will flow onto the report automatically. And finally, if DNB has failed in six attempts to reach the vendor to gather or confirm credit history, this would reflect as an attempts exhausted decline and provide you with the opportunity to resubmit the vendor and or have the vendor call in to DNB directly. So now let's go over some of the other more common reasons why a vendor will not be accepted to report on your company. Your vendor will be declined if your company and the vendor have a common principal, which means you or another principal have ownership in both businesses. You can't report on your own business because you can't be trusted to provide truthful information. The vendor will be declined if there are reciprocating vendor submission, meaning that both your company and the vendor would be reporting on each other. You can't report on a company that's also reporting on you. Credit reporting is not a good place for anything that could possibly resemble quid pro quo. Your vendor could be declined if the vendor's contact number is disconnected or rings to a different business. This is one of those no-brainers. DNB is going to have to try to reach your vendor at the number on the DNB report. If it's not accurate, then they can't be contacted. The vendor can be declined if the vendor's phone only rings to an answering machine or fax tone. Same thing, no brainer. DNB has to be able to speak to an actual person. People will often get frustrated because they want their vendor contacted at a particular phone number, such as a cell phone, 
but DNB will only contact the OSP or official service phone number associated to the vendor in their own DNB report. Your vendor can also be declined if they're a company that's already on record as declining to report credit references on any of their clients. Many companies refuse to provide information about their clients. If their information is already on record as refusing to provide, DMB will not contact them. At the same time, some companies will provide information if it's been previously authorized in writing. The vendor can also be declined if their callback number is not associated to the business. DNB will often leave a message for a vendor to give them a callback to provide information. If the callback comes from a number not associated to the business, it will usually not be accepted. Your vendor can also be declined if they have too low of payment history in their own report to support a high credit amount. They can't report that they provided you with $100,000 worth of credit if their highest credit on file is $50. It just makes sense that the vendor would only be able to provide credit if they have a substantial enough income and credit file of their own. The, your vendors can be declined if they refuse to answer one or more of the required questions. This goes back to the seven questions the vendor has to answer. They have to provide answers to all questions. Leaving even one question unanswered does not qualify as full disclosure. Your vendor may be accepted, but the payment information declined if the only invoice is less than 45 days old or more than 365 days old. DNB does not accept any transaction that's less than 45 days old or any transaction that occurred more than one year ago. While payments added to the file can remain there for 24 to 28 months, they must have occurred within the one year mark. Your vendor could be declined if the vendor does not recognize your business name as having an account. Transactions must be registered under the business name as it appears in DNB's file. Personal transactions or business transactions that are personally guaranteed are usually not accepted unless the business is a sole proprietorship. Your vendor can also be declined if they can only be reached on a non-corporate line. DNB will initially call the OSP number for the vendor as it appears in their DNB report. They will only call another number if directed to do so by someone at the corporate office. Your vendor can be declined if they voice unusual or suspicious concerns about your business. From time to time, a vendor who's not prepared for DNB's call may offer unusual information about your business, such as saying that you recently changed the name on the account or that you requested they report a higher transaction than the actual invoice amount. Either of these can cause your business to be placed into severe risk status. Your vendor could be declined if the reporting agent is not in a position to report. The person who's reporting on behalf of the trade reference must be either a named principal or be employed in the credit or billing department or someone who would have access to that information. Generally, sales reps and receptionists are typically not accepted. Your vendor can be declined if the vendor is part of a known trade ring Trade rings are companies who practice reporting fraudulent transactions on multiple businesses. They will oftentimes be companies who sell trade lines or attempt to report on others within their same circle. Your vendor can also be declined if they are a branch location of a company who already automatically reports. Branch locations can only be accepted under specific prerequisites such as operating as a standalone location. Generally, payment information will be reported only by a headquarters because that's where the main records are maintained. Your vendor could be declined if they push too hard to be added to your report. 
it is common knowledge that vendors don't usually volunteer to report on only one specific customer. Vendors don't typically push back and demand to be added once they've been declined by DNP. This kind of dogged or belligerent pushiness casts suspicion on both companies. The vendor will be declined if they're listed as a utility, such as a phone, cell phone, water, electric, gas, or cable. Utility companies either already report on all business customers or they choose not to report at all. Utility companies are sometimes operated by a municipality, which automatically deems them as ineligible. Utility companies generally require a deposit to be withheld on the account, so it's really not true credit. Your vendor can also be declined if the only credit history is an unused line of credit. This is another one of those no-brainers. You have to actually use a portion of the credit line in order to generate a balance due. Let's say Home Depot gives you a $20,000 line of credit, but you only used $100 so far. They're only going to report on the actual used portion of the credit. They report only on what you owe. Your vendor can also be declined if their SIC code deems their company as unqualified to report. Certain SIC codes are not permitted to report on their customers due to the nature of their transactions. These can include banks, utilities, landlords, management consultants, and insurance agencies. Your vendor can be declined if they're currently being investigated for suspicious activity or reporting. This includes vendors who are currently being investigated for illicit reporting practices, or associated to a company currently being investigated, or has a common principle associated to a company currently being investigated. Even with all the possibilities your vendor could be declined, there are still so many benefits if they do get accepted and are allowed to report, so it's well worth the headaches of going through the process. Here are some simple tips to keep you on track. Check your vendor information at dandb.com to ensure accuracy before you attempt to submit them. Call the vendor to make sure they're willing to take DNB's call. Ask your vendor if there's a specific person DNB should ask for. Provide your vendor with your authorization to report and see if they need that authorization in writing ahead of time. You can even provide your vendor with the questions DMV will ask them so they're prepared for the call. You may want to ask your vendor to let you know once they've been contacted. That way you can watch for the payment information to flow into your report. You want to make sure that you only submit vendors who will report that you always pay on time. Any vendors that get declined should be submitted for a second attempt, but you should never resubmit any declined vendor more than once. Constantly resubmitting a declined vendor can throw up red flags on your company. Vendors that are declined for attempts exhausted can actually call into DNB to report your payment history directly, but you'll need to resubmit them so the case is active before doing so. There's a lot of information here, but we are here if you want to reach out for assistance. Starpoint Credit Solutions provides free one-on-one -on -one business credit consultations to small business owners looking for answers. You can call us, email us, follow our blog, or visit our website. Our knowledge base page provides tons of free information and short, easy to read articles. Remember, we also offer paid credit building and enhancement services for those who would like to reap the rewards of good credit while leaving the bulk of the hard work to us. Thank you for your time and interest. We hope you found the information helpful. Remember to follow our blog at starpointcreditsolutions.wordpress.com for more free information, tips, and techniques 
to get your business the credit it deserves.